So many complications may arise during atrial fibrillation ablation, but we have strong data that these complications are not that big. Actually, the recently published Cabana trial, which was a randomized trial between medication and ablation, showed in a large series of patients worldwide that uh, the complication rate is not that high, it's not superior than 2 to 3 percent, and it's not different from the one that patients may have from medications. So I think this trial show very well that complication rate of the ablation is not higher than medication. This complication can be small, like groin hematoma, can be bigger, like uh, periprocedural stroke or uh, uh, tamponade, meaning the heart gets a perforation from the ablation or for the catheter manipulation, and this requires drainage of, uh, of the blood. I would say these are the two most uh, common uh, complications. But despite that, I think the technology and the use of uninterrupted anticoagulation would uh, allow us uh, to minimize this complication. Nowadays, even growing access can be obtained with uh, ultrasound guidance. So uh, I believe that complications are uh, inevitable in uh, anything in medicine, from medication to procedures. But uh, what makes the difference uh, between a medication and a procedure is the experience of the operator and the experience of the center where the procedure is performed. So if I have to advise patients or physicians is when you send a patient for an ablation, don't worry about the complication as long as you send your patient to an expert operator and uh, to a center that is used to receive patients that can handle complications. So acutely, the biggest challenge are the perforation of the heart. And uh, because you, know, you have uh, uh, bleeding in the pericardium, you have to do a pericardiosynthesis and try to revert that, block the blood, and uh, uh, hopefully you can avoid an open chest to, to fix that complication. And I think that right now, technology allows us to control power, uh, force that we are applying to the tissue and we have direct and indirect parameters. And I think that also intracardiac echo is a, you know, a, a technology, an ultrasound can allow you to uh, immediately identify this complication and treat this type of complication, which is pericardial effusion tamponade, before an effusion become a tamponade. So I think uh, that uh, this is the most worrisome and uh, technology and experience can allow us to avoid that. Well, you know, I think I mentioned this already, meaning that experience of the operator and experience of the center, not only the operator. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, many patients have atrial fibrillation, and uh, this procedure is performed by operators that do less than 25 procedures per year. There are strong data in the literature showing that if, if your operator does not do at least 25 procedures, and if your center where you perform, where you undergo ablation, does not do at least 50 procedure per year, probably that is not the, the center of the operator where you want to undergo a procedure. So my advice is go to a center where the operator is expert, where the hospital is expert about managing a uh, patient with ablation. And uh, then I think that as happening in cooking, you know, the best chef can uh, burn uh, a piece of meat. Therefore, I think once you, you have a good operator, it's a matter of luck. The good thing is that medication we looks like at the alternative also have side effects that should be considered as bad as complication of an ablation. Well, you know, there are uh, uh, for sure good information that are coming out from the late breaking trial. Late breaking trial are always, you know, uh, new, give uh, always uh, new data about how can we improve. And I think that as physician, my goal is improve the quality of life of my patient by increasing success rate and minimizing complications. And I think that all we do here and all is, is presented here has that in mind.